Hi, Bill Edstrom here. In this video, I want to do a flashback to one of the videos I did for Groove 3 back in 2010. This was when Studio One was in, still in version one. I was showing how to use the fader port in the series called Studio One Advanced. This was the very first version. Now that video on using fader port still holds true today, even though Studio One's changed a little bit. Punch-in mode works a little differently. Now you hit record to go into punch-in mode instead of play. And also you have the option now to assign the user key to a macro, which I use to assign it to return to zero. I don't show that in this video, but just be aware that that's available as well. Otherwise, everything here still applies to Studio One. I think the fader port is an excellent addition to any Studio One setup. If you want to see any of my other videos, just go to Groove3.com and you can see all the videos that I've created. The most recent one is Studio Live AI Explained. And there's also Studio One version 2 Explained and Studio One version 2 Advanced are also available right there. To get information on my Studio One book, go to BillEdstrom.wordpress.com. And stay tuned for using the fader port with Studio One from Studio One Advanced. Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over the features of the Personas fader port as you would use it with Studio One. Now I've got it set up here and it's to the left of my keyboard. And I would say this is the most typical way to set up a fader port because it gives you transport and basic channel controls on your left hand, leaving your other hand free to operate the mouse or your pointing device. So let's go over the functions. We're going to look on screen and at the device itself. I'm going to select a channel here and I'll open the inspector on the screen. And you can see that as I move the fader, the big fader on the fader port, it will move the selected fader on the track. So this is the volume on the track. If I open the mixer, then you'll see that this controls the mixer of the selected channel. So if I click on a different channel, you see that the fader actually moves to adjust to the position in software of that fader, and then you can adjust the fader appropriately. Now, likewise, on the selected channel, you can adjust the pan using the pan knob, and it's fairly fine level adjustment. There's also, for the channel, the mute. You'll see that affects the on-screen mute control solo and record enable for the selected track or channel. When I have the channel selected, it will reflect in all of these places, in the inspector, on the track, and on the channel. So let me just do a solo so you can see how that works. Now, if we go to the next line here, the channel select line, the forward and back arrow buttons will increment through the channels. And as you do that, you'll see the fader will jump to the right position or to the match the position on that channel. And so you can move along here and then make an adjustment using this big long throw fader. Now the bank disconnects this from the on-screen selected channel. So say you wanted to control one of these faders. If we put this on bank, you'll see that now I'm controlling fader one, but my selection's over here. As you increment through, I'll increment through one, two, and now as I move the fader, I'm controlling this. So the bank disconnects the selection from the operation of this fader. Sometimes that's useful if you're trying to control something here, but you want another on-screen control. You can kind of mix two things together at the same time, one with your mouse and one with this fader. It's kind of a cool feature. Turn bank off there. Now this is a direct connection to the main out. So if I click output here to turn on that, now I'm over here controlling the output fader. So this is really quite handy just in the general setup of your studio. You can hit this button, you can control the main output to set the volume. So if you need to bring that down because it's too loud, you can just quickly do that. And if you're not using these, you could just leave it set that way. Now, let's just go on to the next set of functions. These are for re reading and writing automation. So we'll just set up a track here and go over how that works. Now we've covered automation, or at least we've summarized it in other videos. If we open automation, then right here, we're going to automate volume on this track that we have selected. To write automation, you just need to play back with the write automation select, and you'll see that on screen here. You'll see it in the inspector, and you'll also see it on the channel. 
Now you don't need to be in record mode because that's for recording audio. For recording automation, you just put automation into write mode or maybe touch mode, which we'll go over now, and then you play back. So when we start to hear that track, we can adjust the level of that track. Right now it's silent there. So now I can easily affect the level of that track. So we'll stop that. Now I'll just rewind and we'll go and do touch. Now touch will start to write automation only when you touch and start to make changes to the fader. So we'll go into touch mode and show how that works. So I'm going to hit play. So it's following what was already there, but now I'm going to grab it and make a change. And then when I let go, it stops making those changes. So that's how touch works. Now, if you don't want automation at all, you can put down off and then the fader will not track along with those changes. Now just watch how this works. So not only will the fader not track, but the software will not track because we're actually turning off automation on that channel. Now you might want to also turn that off if you're playing back and the fader is actually making noise in the background because it's, it's moving. You can turn off the fader with this, but it will also cancel automation on that track if you set it that way. All right, so let's move on to the next set of functions. The window view, this is generically set up for any digital audio workstation, but it has specific functions on Studio One. Now watch if I disable mix here, the console view will disappear. So you can bring up the console view or hide it with that button. Now this one that says project is actually tied into the editor in Studio One. So you can bring that up or hide that. And likewise, this transport brings up or closes the browser. Direct key into that. Now undo will undo the last operation. So if you just saw there on screen, I just undid that automation right up here. If I click undo again, it'll undo all these other automation writes that we did before. Now you can do redo if we push shift and then redo and you'll see that they start to come back here on the screen. Exactly like control Z would work using the keyboard. The shift has a few more functions, but let's continue on with the special transport keys. Punch enables the punch mode right here. And the way punch mode works is that when it hits the loop marker, the in and out points on your loop, it will enter into record mode. If I double click between two markers, it will set the loop in and out points between those two markers. So then if I back up here and turn punch on, let's put this track into record enable. Then when it hits there, let me just turn this off so you can see the effect. We'll play back. When we hit 13 here, it'll actually go into record mode. We show this in the sections on recording. See, we're in record mode. There's no audio in, but you'll see that I'm recording an audio event right during that spot. And when it gets to the end of that section, it'll drop right out of record punch mode. Right, just as planned. But anyway, you can do that directly on the fader port. You can go into that punch mode. Now we could just undo that by clicking undo here because we don't want that. Now the user is a shortcut into this solo override mode or this master solo. So anything that you've got solo, if you've got multiple solo selections for instance, and you just want to turn off all those solos, normally you go down here and click on this button. Well that is tied to this user button on the fader port in the way that it's set up here. Now loop enables or disables loop playback just like clicking down here or typing a forward slash on the keyboard. And now the shift functions are related to the markers. Just close this track here so you can see the markers a little bit better. We can increment and decrement through the markers. If shift is enabled, previous will go backwards through markers and next will go forward through markers. In addition, with shift on, pressing this button, loop, that says mark below it will insert a marker onto the timeline. All these are really handy if you're working alone and you're trying to do some overdub or recording on your own or maybe a little bit away from the computer. So you can navigate with markers, you can add a marker, you can also play, rewind, and things like that. Return to zero, all without having to use the keyboard or the mouse. So another thing with shift enabled is that the pan operates as a type of a shuttle. 
Now, it's not the smoothest thing, but it is a basic operation shuttle control when you've got shift enabled. The final row, which are the main transport buttons, the ones that get often the most use, this is rewind. You can see that the playhead or the insert cursor, technically called the playback cursor, will go forward and backward as you hold these buttons down. We've got a stop, we've got a play, so separate play and stop. Pretty much like you'd expect to find from a transport control. We've got record enable, we've got a record button here. That also works exactly like the record button on the transport in Studio One. So if you have shift enabled, the rewind button will take you to the beginning of the endpoint of the loop marker. So you can see the loop here is set between 13 and 21. Shift is enabled. This goes to 13, which is the beginning of this loop brace right here. And if you have it here, it'll take you to the end. So if you wanted it to rewind to the beginning of your song, then if you had the loop brace set back to here, it would take you back to the beginning of the song. Now there's also a combination of keys. If you hold these two together, that will also take you to the end of the song. So I'll just move it out here. If I hold stop and rewind together, that is returned to zero. That's why it says RTZ down here on the bottom. That's a summary of the Personas fader port as used with Studio One. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.